Hello, sportsmen. Hope you're having a Merry Christmas if you're watching this on Christmas Eve. We have a show that, uh, well, we're going we're gonna to use a bunch of the home videos that people have sent in to us recently. And we're going to ask you, well, you know, we kind of got the idea the way they do on those Sunday night shows. We're going to ask you while you're writing in for your Practical Sportsman magazine to tell us which video you like best. And we'll give out prizes to these people who have sent in what you think are the best home videos. We have a great recipe, tell you a little bit about our uh, big buck requirements because we want you to get your award applications in, so stay tuned. Keep smiling, I am. I'm Fred Trost. It's time for the Practical Sportsman. Well, let's start this show with our video contest, something we've never done before, but you're going to watch about six or seven videos we have. The first one that we have lined up for you is one that we put on on one of our early Practical Sportsman show, The Deer and the Dog. Remember that story? Look at this crazy deer playing with the dogs every single day. Here's a home video taken on June 6, 1990 by David Mamo from Milford. Now this is a wild deer, a yearling doe that was born the year earlier here in his backyard and for some unexplained reason took a liking to Dave Springer's spaniels that were usually kept in a pen. Now can you believe what you're seeing? That deer is actually playing with the dogs. The dogs wag their tails, the deer wags its tail, they all deke and dodge through the fence and run along like three dogs at play. But that white-tailed deer shouldn't be doing this. First of all, dogs will chase deer, and even family pets will chase and kill deer if they get a chance. It's just an instinctive behavior that comes out when dogs run in groups. But there's something that the Mamo family was more concerned about than the deer's safety. It was the Mamo's young kids. Could that deer be trusted in the yard? Deer out there, Eric? Huh? Is a deer out there? Dave pulls back with the camera, and you can see how close they are. You see the deer? Yeah. Eric is too small to appreciate what's happening here, but he would also be too small to understand that if the deer came up to him in the yard, that deer could be extremely dangerous. Deer strike out at each other with their hooves, which can be sharp, and to a small child, could be fatal. Well, sure, the deer looks playful here, but something is terribly wrong. The smell of dogs or the sight of dogs should cause that deer to run. The fact that it doesn't, causes Dave Mamo a lot of concern. Now this wild deer played with these dogs for two weeks, every day, twice a day, when it would feed in the morning and in the evening. And Dave got an idea. He thought he'd try to teach the deer a lesson. So one day, he turned the dogs loose, figuring that they'd chase the deer, scare it, and maybe the deer wouldn't come back. That'd make him feel better. At least they'd feel that their kids were safe in the yard. I mean, this is an urban area. Now, they have some horses, well, so it's semi-rural, but there are other houses within sight. That's why he turned his dogs loose to give this deer a scare. But the dogs ran up to the deer, and the deer chased them all the way back to the barn. They've shooed the dogs out again, and the deer chased them back again. A crazy deer. The deer that liked to play with dogs, well, it wasn't normal, but it never hurt anybody. David Mamo got some great tape, and that deer hasn't been seen since. I'm glad we got a chance to see this quirk of nature on home video. That's just about the most unusual deer behavior you'll ever see. Well, I don't know, you be the judge. We call that one the deer and the dog. If that's your vote, when you send in for your Practical Sportsman magazine, make sure that you vote for the deer and the dog. Now we have one coming up that, well, the deer doesn't do anything unusual, but certainly by itself, it's a strange deer. Leonard Lee Roos says that white deer like this are mutations. Oftentimes, other non-related deer will drive them away. Leonard Roos says that white mutations like this are easy to sneak up on because usually they're hard of hearing. At least that's Lenny's experience. Ed Willauer used a tripod to steady his pictures, but it was a friction head tripod. You can see how the friction makes for very jumpy pans when he wants to move the camera. John Ford says that you can buy fluid head tripods nowadays for about $120. The fluid head allows you to move the camera smoothly and doesn't jerk like this. It's worth the investment for you home video buffs. 
Now, if this deer was colored normally, it would blend in with this dead grass, but being white, it stands out. That's why there weren't too many white deer in the United States 100 years ago. Wolves could spot a white deer a mile away, and they were the first to be eaten. But we don't have many wolves around anymore. This little buck made it for three years until this past summer when it was hit by a car. Ed said that it always seemed to be a little slow, slower than its twin, and it seemed not to be as healthy as the other deer. That's often the case with mutations, and especially with albino deer. Now, this one wasn't a true albino. It had dark hair on its face and tail, dark hooves, dark nose, and eyes. But we thank Ed Willauer for sending us his home video of this extremely unusual buck. That video we call White Deer. If you think that's the best, make sure you send that in to us and tell us you like that video best of all. It's a very unusual to find a deer like that. It isn't a true albino, but it is a white deer. Now we're going to move to another creature, a woodland creature, a ruffed grouse that seemed fascinated by the sound of a chainsaw. Last spring, Harry Reinfelder at Manuskong Bay said he knew somebody who knew somebody else who videotaped a ruffed grouse that came running to the sound of a chainsaw. Darrell Bosley from Grawn was the guy running the chainsaw. He sent us his home video. We dubbed it up on our professional equipment. Have you ever seen anything like this? Every time Daryl cut wood last summer, this grouse showed up. Normally, we think that wild creatures run at the sound of man, and especially loud sounds of engines and chainsaws. But every now and then, we hear about a ruffed grouse that's attracted. After seeing this grouse a few times and telling his friends who didn't believe him, Daryl asked his wife, Lynn, to come out and videotape this crazy bird. Daryl found that he could get close, even with the chainsaw off, dig up the dirt with a stick to expose worms and insects, and that grouse would eat them. You know, just getting this close to a wild grouse is bizarre, but having that wild creature feel comfortable enough to eat, that's even more bizarre. But this grouse was so relaxed that it ate out of Daryl's hand. Usually, animals are wary when they're cornered, and it's difficult to get a hand around them. But not only could Daryl do that, he could pet that wild grouse. Now, he doesn't just touch it lightly, either. He's petting that grouse relatively hard, and the grouse holds still. If that was your favorite, vote for Chainsaw Grouse as your number one video. In fact, you could rank these number one, two, and three, or so if you wish. But that's Chainsaw Grouse, unusual behavior of a wild creature. Now we're going to go to one that was a home video we ran a couple of years ago. Tom Walter got this video. Now, I tell you, if there's anybody who wished he had a chainsaw in his hand at the time, it was Tom Walter because he encountered a bear on a fishing trip. He was by himself with his camcorder, and this bear came up, which he didn't know if it was friendly or what. Turns out that we found that this was probably a predatory bear that wanted to eat Tom Walter. Now, we're going to show you the video as it was taken, minus just a few words. Go on! Go on, bear! Go on, bear! You go away, bear! Go on, bear! Get out of here! Get out of here, bear! Get! Get out of here, bear! Get! Get out of here, bear! Get out of here! Get out of here! 
You go! Go away, bear. What else could we call that home video? The most memorable thing about that isn't so much the bear, but poor Tom screaming behind the camera. That's <laughs> Go Away, Bear, which is a classic, especially from Tom's point of view. Now, we did just run recently the story of Tom who drew a bear permit. He went bear hunting, and he was by himself in the evening. He had his video cam again. This time, he set the video cam on himself in his blind right after he shot the bear. If you've ever bear hunted, uh, I think you'll find this one something you can relate to. I know you're not going to believe this. I just shot a bear. It's not more. It's about, I don't know, maybe 110 pounds. I hit it. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. It's 25 to 8. It ran straight ahead. My compass is in the car. I'm going to get lost. I heard it crying. I know I hit it. It jumped hard. It came from across the river. I got to go now because it's going to get dark. I'm going to get lost. I got one though. I shot a bear. I think I'm just going to leave all my here. Not very big. Oh God. Oh shit, I'm gonna get lost. Okay. Here we go. Oh god, I'm shaking I'm like a leaf. Oh, it didn't go very far. His whole body, his whole body jumped. His whole body went all the way sideways. Oh, oh, gotta go now. Get back. Okay, signing off. He's deader than sh. He's deader than sh. I got a bear. <laughs> I got a bear. Well, that we just call Tom's Bear. Of course, the story was really Tom's reaction to the bear, just like it was in Go Away Bear. But, you know, as we go through these videos, you have to decide what you enjoy the most. Do you like seeing a sportsman scared out of his wits? Do you like seeing a, a strange animal? Or do you like seeing an animal react strangely? This next video we have for you is one that we just ran, uh, well, a week or so ago in our big buck night. It has to do with a buck deer and a cow elk. First of all, let's show you the video that we showed you, the edited version like we often do, on our big buck night. That's a cow? Yeah. That's a bull. He's trying to take a por pornographic picture. <laughs> That look like it. Isn't that a white tail there? I can't see the other I'd one. I'd like to pull up a little bit farther. You got you got him zoomed right in? I got it zoomed as far as we can go. The other one is right behind him. Which way? Left or right? Right, right in behind him. Right, it's blocking the Okay. Middle. I'm afraid to pull up. I'll try to all right, pull up. You're all right, right there. There he goes again. It's there, a buck. Hell yes, look at the size of that thing. Kevin Covert from DeWitt and Terry Covert from Midland shot this home video on I-75, 15 miles south of the Mackinac Bridge. Now you can see the situation. A cow elk, undoubtedly in heat, is trying to mount a huge white-tailed buck, at least a 10 or 12 pointer, that's obviously trying to catch the in-heat scent from the back of this elk. Now will anything come of this? <laughs> no way! But Kevin and Terry Covert, thanks for sending us a magic moment of nature that few people would ever see. 
That buck and cow elk was the edited version that we cut down for you on Big Buck Night. Actually, there was a little more when those cars came up, a little more language in there, too, that we're not going to be able to bring you. But let's, let's show you the tape as Terry Covert actually shot it. What's a damn duck? A cow? Well, that's a fuck. Pull up. Pull up just a little bit. That's a big duck. Pull up just a little bit. Zoom in on that buck. Is that a white tail? That's a cow? Yeah. That's a bull. He's trying to... take him por pornographic pictures. <laughs> that looked like it. Isn't that a white tail there? I can't see the other I'd one. I'd like to pull up a little bit farther. You got you got him zoomed right in? I got it zoomed as far as we can go. The other one is right behind him. Which way, left or right? Right, right in behind him. Right, it's blocking okay. the view. I'm afraid to pull up. I'll try to all pull right, up. You're all right, right there. There he goes again. It's it, a buck. Hell yes, look at the size of that thing. Oh, you stupid truck. Oh, man. They're going to kill that. They'll kill that buck. Well, no, we won't, because I got to. Yes, they will. They're going to kill right that there. buck. I'd kill the buck, too, it's as soon as I can get a... Well, come on, let us see, Daniel. Now, can you see? Right. Yeah. Can you believe that elk trying to climb, that cow elk's trying to climb all over that white tail buck? Huge buck. Now they're leaving. Now I can't see which way they went. Well, that's an odd story of an odd couple in the outdoors. You just got to see the unedited version, although you have to come to the museum here to actually hear the audio on some of these. Um, well, they're not necessarily X-rated, but they're definitely uh, for adult ears. So we'll spare you that on television. Let's run down. We don't have time. Do we, do we have time? For that, no, we don't. Okay, we don't have time for this last video we wanted to put in because we got to get on to some other things on the show. But let me run down recipes. Hey, it's time to get onto our recipes right now. Kathy Beitler has joined up with Lois Bone for definitely a Christmas classic. We have a contest winner recipe: walleye with clam stuffing from Lois Bone, and Lois always does something nice with fish. Well, it, not just nice but, tasting, but <laughs> gorgeous looking. It sure is. Presentation is great. Got mushrooms and a little bit of celery and onion. Go just saute that a little bit and add some either clams or shrimp, whichever you prefer. And then, of course, some breadcrumbs because this is going to be a stuffing and it's going to go into your fish. And then you're just going to mix everything all together. And you don't want to overcook this and let everything get kind of soggy on you and it'll do it in a hurry. You know, you could probably use uh, crab meat or lobster meat sure. or other types of meat if you didn't want clam or shrimp. Right. And then, of course, your juice, just to soften it up a little bit. and make Ju the, Juice from what? The clams or the shrimp. And then go to add water to make um, like one and a half cups. Mm -hmm. And then you can either use fillets or the whole fish. And if you use fillets, of course, you just put your stuffing on one and then put that uh, top on another fillet on top. Well, we're showing the practical way right. to do it. Here. The, <laughs> exactly. easy, the easy way to do it. <laughs> and then just dot it with butter and it goes into the oven. And I'll tell you, that the way you put it in there, it's going to taste great. But Lois Bone pulls out no <laughs> stops when she wants to make an elegant-looking recipe. Get a load of this. It's just basically uh, vegetables with a little bread, and that's about it. And clams inside. Well, I know it's more complicated than that. You never put anything together like that. that well, not simple. too often, but it's very simple. There's nothing to it. Now, do, do the clams and that stuffing really make it through the meat? Uh, to add a I don't. Or? I don't think they've disrupted the taste of the walleye. No, they're not in it that long for the baking. Okay, so now. you're tasting two different things. You're tasting clam, and then you're tasting the fish. This walleye is as great tasting, and it is very simple. As she said, the recipe, the walleye really He's stands wound alone. Up, isn't he? He's getting wound up. It okay. is. It is fantastic, and it's as fun to watch being presented as it is watching come to the net. That is. That is a great fish. And walleye with clam stuffing gets my vote hands down. Maybe the best fish recipe I've ever eaten. If you're an ice fisherman, don't get too excited. We haven't had enough cold weather to really make a lot of safe ice yet. If you're a walleye fisherman down on the Detroit River, you want a hand line. Lakeside Tackle here in St. Clair Shore says it's slowed down some, but they are getting some walleye by Belle Isle. 
Tawas, no ice on the bay. We don't really expect that quite yet, and the inland ice is not safe. We'll move over to Houghton Lake. Lenny says there's four inches of ice. They're getting three to four walleye per angler, and they're also pulling out a few anglers because four inches, a lot of these guys are going out where it's really thin. Cadillac Chamber of Commerce says five inches of ice. They're getting limits of bluegill. No pike, perch, or walleye have significance reported, but remember, there's open water on a lot of these lakes, and the, it goes down to nothing. Five inches is the stuff near the shore. Captain Emil Dean and Coho Bob both say the steelhead streams uh, are not as good as usual. Fishing is kind of turned off, waiting for a new run of steelhead. When they come up the river, the fishing will get hot. Harry's Place is reporting some perch up here on Minaskong Bay. They do have four to six inches of ice on the bay. That freezes over fairly quickly. Dick's favorite sports in the Keweenaw says no ice on the bay. Don't really expect that quite yet, but four to six inches of, of ice on inland lakes where they are making some catches of small pike. None of this ice is what I would call real safe yet. So really wait till we get some good cold weather before you venture out there, especially if you're taking kids or anybody else. At Bath, we do want to thank Dave Cook from Crystal Video in Grand Rapids for loaning us the camera that John Ford is behind tonight and WKAR in East Lansing for loaning us, loaning us editing equipment. Uh, we are back on the air, having fun, having a good Christmas. I hope you are too, and we'll see you next week. Talk about 1993.